All right, so we're going to uh, start our unit on um, conic sections. So really, it's just one section in your book. Um, but remember, in the packet, this is going to be section um, 6.2. So conic sections are basically the, um, the four different cross sections you can get when you slice a cone. So if you had a cone and you slice it straight across and then look at the cross section on the end, you would get a circle. The one um, below it, which says an, uh, an ellipse, that's when you slice a cone, but you slice it as an, at an angle. But what's important when you slice it is you're still going through the sides of the cone. You're not coming out the bottom for an ellipse. If you slice a cone and you come out through the bottom, then you get a parabola. Okay? And that's the conic section that we're going we're gonna to study today. Um, the hyperbola is a little different than the others because that conic section is what you get when you put two cones together, like right at the points, and you slice it straight down. Okay, so it's slice it straight down, and then look at what you have. The part you sliced off, um, the cross section, would be in the shape of a hyperbola. So any questions on the four conic sections? Just what they are. Okay, and parabolas have kind of a, an interesting um, property to them, and if you see a lot of uh, satellite dishes or even some car headlights, they use parabolic shaped um, reflectors in the case of a headlight or dishes in the shape of a, like a satellite dish. So say this is um, part of a parabola. Well, usually, or on some cars, like let's say your bulb for your headlight is right there. Sometimes there's this covering over the front. So you're never actually directly seeing the light from the bulb. What happens is the bulb hits that reflective covering, it'll bounce, it'll hit it, bounce off it, and then the light bounces straight up. That's, that's how a parabolic reflector works. Okay. Light bounces off something, and then the beams are reflected straight out. Um, it's kind of the reverse for a satellite dish. Um, what happens in that case, is the signals are coming in from all over the place. So here's your, usually there's some little thing in the center part of the dish. And what happens is signals bounce in from everywhere and they all bounce exactly to that point because of the shape of the, curva, uh, the curvature of that, of that dish. So they all bounce right to that point. Um, and it's just the way it's designed and then usually there's a wire there or something and it kind of goes into your house. Okay. But there's definitely some, um, some uses for um, parabolic reflectors. We don't really get into applications too much, though. All right, so I'm going to start off with the definition of a parabola. Okay. I'll put it up and let you copy it, and then we'll talk about it. So it's a collection of points in the plane. Plane means it's a flat shape. Okay. Everything we do is, is flat. And every point is the same distance, every point on the parabola is the same distance from two things. A special line we're going to call D, and the special point we're going to call F. So if we wanted to describe a, a simpler conic section, like a circle, I could describe a circle as a, as a set of points that are all a fixed distance from a special point we call the center. Okay. So the definition of a circle, a little simpler. Just a set of points that are all the same distance from a fixed point we call the center. Well, these are the same distance from a fixed point and a fixed line. So I can show you that in the um, program that I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't think I have them named exactly F and D, but I'll, I'll show you which one is which. So in this problem, I'm talking about the special point is A, 
and the special line is line DE, okay, just the way it's labeled here. So point B is a point on the parabola. And what I'm doing up here is these are actual um, calculations. Those aren't static. As I drag B, if I can highlight it, whoops, I don't want to move it. I just want to grab the point just like that. So what's happening as I move B, it's staying on the parabola, but the distance from B to the special point, it measured as a straight line, and the distance from B to that special line, measured perpendicularly, they always stay exactly the same, okay? no matter where, where you move that point. So any questions on that? Those two distances have to stay the same. So if you fix a line, fix a point, and then sketch all the points that are equally distanced from the two things you just fixed, you will get the shape of a parabola. All right. So the reason we call them F and D um, is because F is called the focus of your parabola. That would kind of be like where your car headlight bulb is if you had a parabolic reflector behind it. And D is the directrix. A okay, couple um, special things. The parabola always wraps around the focus. Okay. The directrix, well, the parabola always bends away from the directrix. The parabola never crosses the directrix. It bends away from it. Okay. And it doesn't matter which way you rotate the parabola. There's four ways we can have parabolas opening up, down, left, or right. This is opening down. By the end of today, you'll know how to look at the equation, look at the letter that's squared, whether there's a positive or a negative, and that'll tell you which way it opens. <coughs> Hopefully, you'll, you'll be able to do that by the end of today. All right, so this is summarizing the definition. Um, I'm not going to draw a figure three that's in your um, book, unless I already have it. I don't think I, I have that figure. But if you look in your packet, figure three is saying that the distance from the focus to any point and the distance from that same point to the directrix is always the same. This is summarizing my definition as an equation. Okay, I am going to draw a picture in a little bit. It's not exactly the same as figure three. I think I'm going to draw figure four but it'll kind of get at the same idea. So if you draw a line through your focus and perpendicular to the directrix, that's your axis of symmetry. So I can try to do it here, um, roughly. Let's see if I, so if I draw a line, well, I'm close. If I draw a line through the focus, which is point A, perpendicular to the directrix, I've just drawn an axis of symmetry. Okay. Which means if you were to fold the parabola over that line, it would land right on top of itself. Okay. So axis of symmetry always goes through the focus perpendicular to the directrix. Now, there's a name for the point where the axis of symmetry crosses the parabola. Okay. So I'm not going to go back to the other page, but if I just, I'll just draw it by hand. There's my focus. There's my axis of symmetry. There's a name for that point. Uh, it begins with a V. Does anybody know what that point is called? <coughs> yeah. So the vertex. It's the vertex. So some people say the vertex is like the highest or the lowest or the furthest point to the right or the left. Um, but if you want to really describe it precisely, you could say it's where the axis of symmetry intersects the parabola. Okay. One other um, term they mention we don't really use a lot is called the lattice distance. Okay, or your book calls it um, the lattice rectum. Really sure on the name, that's just what they call it. So the lattice distance um, is the width of the parabola. Now you might be saying, well, 
Doesn't the parabola just get wider and wider and wider? Yeah, but it's the width of the parabola in a certain spot. It's the width of the parabola measured through the focus. Now, most of the time, I'm going to have you ignore that. So if you see directions in the homework that say, find the vertex, find the focus, find the directrix, find the lattice distance, I would want you to do all of that except the lattice distance. Um, I'm not super concerned with that. But I just want you to know what it is. It's the width of the parabola measured through the focus. Any questions on, on that? So with each kind of with each conic section, I kind of front load all the vocabulary. There's a lot of different terms, um, but we get through all the vocabulary, and then the last part is kind of all the numerical equation stuff. Some of these terms we'll see again when we talk about other conic sections. Vertices is going to come up. Um, you'll never see lattice again. Focus or multiple focus, which is foci, that's going to come up. Right? So we'll see some of these terms again, some of them we won't. All right, so we're going to look now at the equation of a. <coughs> now, there's four different ways the equation can be written. The parabola can open up, down, left, or right. I'm not going to go through all four proving, like deriving the equations. Uh, but I will go through one of them. So this is basically figure four from your packet. Okay, I'm going to go through the one where the parabola opens to the right. All right, so what I can do is I can kind of move some things off and then put them back in for you as we go. So what I've done is I drew my axes, put in a par uh, parabola, mark the focus, and then I marked a point on the parabola. Okay. Now I don't really know any of these coordinates except I know the focus is on the x-axis because that's how I drew it. So the x-axis is my line of symmetry in this case. And then from point P what I did is I drew a line straight down. Because what I'm trying to do is kind of make a triangle here. And then from point P, I also drew a line straight to the um, directrix. And then the last thing I did is I drew a line segment from the point <coughs> to the focus. Now, why can I put this and this in? It goes back to the definition of a parabola. The distance from <coughs> any point to the focus and that point to the directrix okay, is the same. So the distance from that point to the focus and that point to the directrix <coughs> is exactly the same. Okay. What is the distance? Well, I don't know. But whatever it is, it's the same. <coughs> okay, any questions on that? All right. and what I've done here is I labeled um, this point has the coordinate A0. So I know that the distance from the origin to here is A units because I went from the origin over however many units A is. Any question on that? All right, so now we said that the distance from any point on the parabola, including the vertex, which is a special point, but the distance from any point to the focus and any point to the directrix is exactly the same. So if the distance from the origin to F is A units, 
What's the distance from the origin, which is where my vertex is, to the directrix? Yeah? It's also A units. The only difference is it's A units in the negative direction. So the equation of my directrix is x equals, because it's a vertical line. And where would it be? It would be A units to the left. That's why I put negative A. All right, so now what we're basically going to do is use the equation, which is the definition of a parabola, and we're going to fill in each side. But we're going to fill it in with the information we have up above. All right. So let's start with the distance from point P to the directrix. I'm going to start with the right hand side, just because it's easier. All right, so the distance from P to the directrix. Okay, let me zoom in on that. And anyone think they can tell me what the distance is from here to here? And what I would do is try to break it into two pieces. Like, you should know this distance, because we know this distance. And that's it's basically a rectangle right there. So we know this distance. And you should know that distance, too, because you know the coordinates of this point. So you know how far to the right you went to get here. And you know that. So just. Do something with those two. Yeah? Would it be a plus x? Yeah, it's a plus x or x plus a. Now, the only thing I want to make sure of is just in case a was a negative, um, I'm going to put an absolute value in there because we always want the distance to be positive. You could do a plus x, you can do x plus a, it doesn't matter. But just put absolute values around it because it is a distance and we want to ensure that it's positive. All right. So the distance from P to the directrix is the same as the distance from P to the focus. So now I want to find this distance. Now, you might just say, well, isn't it the same as the other distance because we have the tick marks on it? Yes, but if you just write absolute value of x plus a again, it's not going to help. So we kind of want to use something different because we have a triangle here. and I think I know two of the sides, so what, what theorem could I use to find this distance? Yep. We could use Pythagorean theorem. We just have to find out how long each side of the triangle is. Okay. Let's start with the, um, the bottom. That's the harder side. But you know this, and you know that small section, so think about what you could do. Yep. X is a distance. Because I thought it was like that. No. X is a distance because we have the point x comma y. So we know this point is at x. So if I go straight down, I basically make a rectangle right here. So if this is x, then that distance is x as well. Okay. So how long would this side Actually, let me make that a little clearer. How long would that part in green be? Yeah? A minus x? Yes, it would be a minus x. Uh, so let's write that down. And I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. So a minus x squared plus, I just need to move that over a little. So that's <coughs> the base. And what about the height? What's the height of that triangle? Y. y. So we've got one side squared plus the other side squared. Add them up and take the square root. Now once we simplify that, we will have the equation of a parabola. And it's going to look a lot nicer than that. And it's not too many steps to simplify. 
Um, first thing I should do is get rid of this square root. So I'm going to square each side. So I have this plus y squared equals x plus a squared. Now, I didn't write absolute value of x plus a squared. How come that's not really important anymore? Yeah? Because if it came out to a negative after you square it, it would be a positive. Yeah. Right? If it comes out negative and you square it, it's already positive anyway, so you don't need to worry about absolute value. Um, now we just need to do this out and then combine like terms. What's a minus x squared? Someone foil that out and tell me what I get. So a squared minus ax. Wait. Would be minus two ax. Yep, you get a minus two ax. Yep, and then. And then Um, not plus 2x. What's my last term going to be? Plus, yep, x squared. x squared. Plus y squared. And then for the other one, x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. And does anybody see something I can do? That's a plus sign. To kind of cancel some stuff out because we have the same thing on the left and the right. Okay, we have that, so we're going to move all those to the same side in a second. Um, so we're going to do something with that next, but is there anything I can cancel first before I start moving, Megan? A squared. Minus a squared from each side. Okay, anything else? Yeah. X squared. Minus x squared from each side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the negative 2ax to the other side by adding it. So I'm going to end up with y squared equals 4ax. So that's the equation we just proved, that that's the equation of a parabola if the vertex is at the origin. Your focus, I'm just copying down what I did up above, the focus was at a comma zero. And a always has to be greater than zero. Okay, think of A as a distance. It's the distance from here to here. It's that distance. So it's always positive. Even if you measure something that goes this way, that's also A, but it's still positive distance even though it's measuring left. So when you write the equation of a parabola, there's one number you need to find, and that's this. You need to find A, plug in for it, and then simplify. Okay. But if you can just remember in your head, A is the distance from my vertex to my focus. Or you can remember it as the distance from my vertex to my directrix. Same thing. Okay. And I think I write that down later on. A is the distance from the vertex to the focus. If you want to write it down now, you, you could. Okay. So when you want to graph a parabola, um, generally I do three points. Try to find the vertex. Um, the directrix isn't a point. That's a line. If you want to draw the directrix, you can. <coughs> Remember that the directrix is not actually part of the parabola. It's just an imaginary line that it bends away from. So technically, the directrix isn't part of the parabola. Neither is the focus. The focus is inside the parabola. Okay? It wraps around it. But if I want to actually sketch the parabola itself, I find about three points. The vertex is one, and then a point either above and below the vertex, or to the left and the right. It, it depends on which way it opens. 
if the parabola opens to the right or to the left after you find your vertex you would probably want to find a point above and below the focus it doesn't have to be above and below the focus but it has to be above and below something so try to find two points above and below if your parabola opened up or down you wouldn't find points above and below the focus to graph it that that doesn't make sense you'd go left and go right and there's your vertex with those three dots you can make a pretty reasonable sketch obviously the further out you sketch you'd probably need some more points if you were gonna keep going but for our purpose I think three is is enough Okay, so any questions on, on that? All right, so now we're getting to some of the stuff where we're going to just use all the equations we have. Um, and I can give you problems a couple of different ways. I can give you some information about the parabola and say, tell me the equation. Or I can give you the equation and say, look at the equation and tell me all the stuff about the parabola. Tell me the vertex, tell me the focus, tell me the directrix and tell me which way it opens, up, down, left, or right. So the first one, you are finding an equation. Now, I said that there's four different equations, one for the parabola opening up, down, left, and right. For now, don't worry about how you figure out which one to use. I'm going to explain that later. I'm telling you you're using this one. Okay? That's the one we just discovered the y squared equals 4ax. If you really wanted to know, well, how do you know it? It's because the vertex is at 0, 0, the focus is at 3, 0, and the parabola has to wrap around the focus. The only way it can do that is if it goes like this. So it has to open to the right. What I would do now, if this was on the test, is I would look at the chart I think I put the page back here, uh, where it's coming up eventually. There's a chart in your packet on page 381 that tells you, under the description column, if your parabola opens to the right, it tells you the equation is y squared equals 4ax, tells you how to find the directrix, the focus, and the vertex. Okay. Now that chart is okay and it's going to work for now because our vertex is always going to be at the origin for now. There's a little bit better chart on page 383 that accounts for the vertex not being at the origin. It's all the same stuff, focus, directrix, equation, and description, but it's, it's more general. Okay. So the ones on 381, we'll use them for now. But eventually, I'm going to go with the ones on 383. OK. So the only thing I have to find is A. Based on the information they've given me, um, anyone think they can tell me what A is? Yep. What is it? Three. Three. Yeah. If you look at the, the chart, it tells you the focus is A comma 0. A comma zero. So in our case, the, fo the A is three. Distance from the focus to the vertex. So my final answer for this one would be y squared equals, what would go on the other side? Uh, 12x. 12x, yep. <coughs> and that's the equation of your parabola. Now, if you look back at something I had right here, they had a fraction. Well, the way you can get a fraction is sometimes, especially in a multiple choice problem, they may rewrite the answer like this. <coughs> Does everyone see what I did to change what was in that box to what's on the right? Just divided each side by 12. Just rearranging it. With parabolas, there's really no set rule on how you have to write it. You can put y squared by itself. You can put x by itself, however you want to do it. Okay. 
I generally stick with the y squared or x squared equals. I don't usually get the linear variable by itself unless they tell me to. So would that, if you said that uh, y equals the square root of 12x, that'd be the same thing? That's another way. Yep, but you make sure you write positive and negative square root of 12x. So technically, to draw this parabola, you would draw a square root function and the negative of the square root function because it fails the vertical line test. So technically, your calculator can't draw this unless you do it in two pieces. All right, so let's try it. Um, so I've got my vertex. We can mark the focus. And let's think about my directrix. Where is my directrix going to be? Keep in mind the definition that if you have a point on the parabola, which we do, it's the same distance from the focus as it is from the directrix. Yep. Uh, x equals negative 3. Yep. It's going to be the equation x equals negative 3. So now I know my parabola is opening to the right. It's going to bend away from the directrix. It's going to wrap around the focus. Um, let's just plug in a number for x that would be easy to work with. Okay. Can somebody give me a value for x I could plug in and it would make the calculation easy? I mean, technically you can plug in anything, but don't plug in like uh, negative 2, because then you take the square root of negative 24. That'd be imaginary. And your parabola doesn't go in the negative direction. So. 3. 3 would be a good point. If you plug in 3 for x, what do you get for y? Yep. Six. Six. And yep. Negative six. negative six. So if you plug in three, you get y squared equals thirty-six. Take the square root, you get two answers, which you should because there's symmetry. So we get the point um, three, six, three, negative six. So there's, it's OK. There's our problem. OK, we're not going to do a ton of sketching, um, because it's basically that every time. But if we need to sketch one more, we want to, let me know. And um, I think I have one more grid set up. Any questions on getting the equation there? OK. Um, this one. So now I'm giving you the equation, and I want you to just tell me everything about the problem. The problem here is it, it's not written the way it should be. It's always y squared equals 4ax. So in order to get 8x as the final answer, what must a have been? Yep. a was 2. Now I can look at my chart and say, all right, the y is squared, the 4 is positive. The, the different options that you have is y squared with a positive 4, y squared with a negative 4. Oh, it's not a negative. x squared with a positive 4. Oh, we don't have an x squared this time. x squared with a negative 4. Those are what you look for. Okay, so I'm looking y squared, positive 4. It's the first row in my table. It tells me the vertex is 0, 0. The focus is a 0. Tells me that it's going to open to the which way? It's going to open right. And then it says the equation of the directrix is x equals negative a. Well, even if I didn't have that, I should be able to figure it out. If I'm at the origin and the focus is two units to the right, well, then the directrix has to be two units to the left. But the chart really kind of simplifies what you do. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay. Let's try another one. Um, this is one that I can sketch if we need to. If people don't care, we don't have to sketch it. All right. It's always supposed to have a 4 on the other side. Okay. It can be a positive 4. It can be a negative 4. 
So can somebody rewrite this one for me so that it's in that standard form that we're using? Y. Now, if you're wondering, how do I know if the negative should go with the 4 or go with the 3? Well, we said right here, or somewhere, A is always positive. A negative would never go with A. Okay. So if you want to put a negative in there, it goes with the 4, not the A. So now we have x squared equals a negative 4. So we're going to look at our chart, and we're going to find x squared equals negative 4. And which way does that kind of parabola open? Yep. Down. Looking at the table, what does it tell me the formula for the focus is? Yeah, it says the formula is 0, negative a. So 0, negative 3. Directrix, um, what's the formula for the directrix? Yeah. <coughs> yep. And this is y equals, because this time we have a parabola that's opening down, so my directrix is going to go left to right. It's not exactly like that. But, um, and then a is 3. Just to let you know, I would not accept that sketch on a test. Um, not very good. And then the vertex, well, it's always been 0, 0 uh, for now. Okay. So that's what they asked us to do. But does anybody have a question on the actual sketch, how you would do it? You've got your directrix, you plot that, you put your focus, find two points. I would use, well, what would you use for y this time? What would be a good value to pick? to make the arithmetic easy, yeah? Negative three. Yes, negative 3. If you pick 3, you're going to be taking the square root of negative 36. Doesn't make sense, and it shouldn't, because the parabola doesn't go up there. Parabola never hits y equals 3. It's at negative 3, and it goes down. Okay. So any questions on, on that one? All right, um, so let's find an equation uh, for the parabola where the focus is 0, negative 4, and the directrix is y equals negative 4. First thing you have to figure out now is which equation do you use? You have 4 to pick from. How could I figure out which way this parabola opens? What could I do kind of quick just to see what's going on? Look where the focus is. All right, so let's put where the focus is, so 0, 4. And what else? That alone wouldn't tell me enough, but did, what else? What other piece of information do I have? Um, the directrix is y equals negative 4. The is y equals negative 4. So now just looking at that picture, the parabola has to bend away from the directrix and wrap around the focus. So which way does this open? Yep. Opens up. Now I'm going to look at my chart, find the equation when it's opening up. That's um, x squared. Um, up is a positive 4. So it's x squared equals 4ay. Now we at least know the equation we're going to use. But I need to find a. What did I say a was? It's the distance from the what to the what. Yep. The directrix to the vertex. The directrix to the vertex or the vertex to the focus. Well, they didn't give me the vertex. But where does the vertex have to be here based on where the focus and directrix are? It always has to be, <coughs> like if you measure the distance from one to the other, it should be what? It should be halfway. They should be the same. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's where your vertex has to be. So now, the distance from the vertex to the focus, or vertex to directrix, 
is four units. There's your equation. And again, you could write it like this if you wanted to type it in on the calculator. That's how you would rearrange it to get it on the calculator. Any questions on how we got that? So A is four. That's what I can tell you. One, two, three. Um, all right, let's try this one. And then we'll get into ones where we're not at the origin. Um, so the vertex is 0, 0. The axis of symmetry is the x-axis. And it contains the point negative 1 half 2. Okay. So we did this in the last problem. What's the first thing you always want to figure out about the parabola? And that will help you to get your equation. Which way it opens. Because right now we're, we don't know anything. We don't know which way it opens. I don't even know which equation I should be plugging into. So my vertex is at the origin. It has the point negative 1 half 2. The axis of symmetry is the x-axis. So which way does this parabola have to open? If that's my axis of symmetry. Yep. It has to open left. It has to do something like that. If it opened up or down, that wouldn't work at all. That's not the axis of symmetry. Okay. Axis of symmetry has to go through the parabola. And if you said, well, could it open right? No. Because if it opened right, it would never go through the point negative 1 half 2. Okay. The vertex is the point that's furthest left if it opens to the right. So it wouldn't go any further left than what you're seeing right there. Okay, so it's got to look something like that. Okay, so it opens left. Um, what's the equation for a parabola opening left? Yep. Now, what letter do we have to find there to get the final answer? Yep. We have to get A. Well, A is the distance from the vertex to the focus. And uh, no, I don't know the focus. Well, let's check the directrix. A is the distance from the vertex to the directrix. I don't know that either. So now I can't find A the same way I have been, but I can find it a different way. What could I do here to get A? Yep. Did you plug in the coordinates for x and y? Yep. You know a specific point on the parabola, so that's enough information to get a. So y squared is negative 4ax. So we get 4 equals negative 4a. You know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm just going to write a half, because negative 4 times negative 1 half is um, positive. 4 equals 2a, so a is 2. Now I've got a, I just have to write my final answer. y squared equals negative 8x. Any questions on that one? All right, so all the ones we've done so far have all been for the um, parabola at the origin. <coughs> Now we're going to let, I'm sorry, the vertex of the parabola at the origin. Now we're going to let the vertex of the parabola be anywhere. So the coordinates for your vertex are hk. And then everything changes um, a little bit. Okay? But if we use this chart, it really simplifies what we have to think about. Vertex, that's new, is at HK. A is still the same. It's the distance from the focus to the vertex. Now, notice when I define A to you, I never said A is the distance from the focus to the origin. That was always true in the last problems. The only reason that statement would have been true is because the origin and the vertex were always the same. 
But when they're not, you want to define A the way I, I have been saying it, the distance from the focus to the vertex, or the focus to the directrix. The origin has nothing specific to do with anything in a parabola. Unless it's the special case where the vertex is the origin. So again, you don't need to copy all that down because you got you got that all in your um, packet. You know, you can look at the packet. If there's anything you can't read because any of the symbols photocopied light, you might want to adjust it. Uh, this symbol looks a little white in your packet, but it is a plus sign. Uh, that looks a little bit light to me, but that's a that's a plus sign. I think everything else looks pretty good. So keep in mind, A is always positive. So if you want to put a negative with something, put it with the 4. Don't put it with the A. Great. Any questions or anything else there that people need to um, darken up a little bit? If you need a larger version because you can't read it, let me know, and I can print you out a larger one. Okay. So now let's find the equation of this parabola. There's three variables we need to find. Okay. What, are, what are the three variables in these types of equations? What, what are the three letters we have to find? Yeah? H, K, A. H, K, A. Okay. Uh, what is H in this problem? negative 2. What's k? Yep. Three. 3. And a, think about the definition, the distance from the focus to the vertex. What's the distance between the vertex and the focus in that problem? If you visualize it, they both have the same y value, so that means they're both up at the same height. They're just across from each other. Yep. 2. Now, I've got h, k, and a, but I still have a problem. What, what don't I know yet that I need to figure out? Yeah? Which way? I've got to figure out which way it opens. I've got to figure out something because I don't even know which equation to plug H, K, and A into. Okay. So my vertex, let's just do kind of a quick sketch. My vertex is negative 2, 3. My focus is 0, 3. Which way does this parabola have to open? Grace? Yeah, it's going to open right because it wraps around the focus. Okay. So now I know it opens right. So let's see if I can get this on the screen. So it opens right. We're using that equation. So we've got y minus 3 squared equals 4a. So that's 8 times x minus h. x minus h. Now be careful because it is x minus minus 2. Where some people get mixed up now is if I ask you to work backwards and tell me the vertex from this equation, they tell me the vertex is negative 3, 2. No. It's negative, it's 3, negative 2. 3, negative 2. So the way you work backwards from the equation to figure out the vertex is look at the number after the minus sign, 3. And then here you don't have a minus sign, so think of it that way. The number after the minus sign is negative 2. Okay, so be careful if you have to work backwards. Okay. Questions on that All right, so basically, in general, just to summarize um, to summarize what, what these kind of look like, parabolic equations always have one variable that's squared and one variable that's not. One variable is quadratic, one variable is linear. So if I go back to the chart just for a second, 
looking at the top row. This is the one that has the y squared with just an x. The one below it, y squared, just an x. If we keep going, now we have the x being squared, and the y isn't. x being squared, y isn't. Okay. So that's how you can tell you have a parabola. When we start getting into something like the x squared and the y squared, now we're looking at something totally different. It could be an ellipse, or it could be a hyperbola. There's a way you can figure out which one is which. Um, but for today, we're not going to look at that. Okay. So any questions on that? All right, so the very last thing we're going to look at is going to tie in something we've done before, is sometimes they give you an equation that's not written in a way that's helpful. Okay. What they end up doing is, if I can just put the slide back that I deleted. Um, I can't put it on the board at the same time. I'll go right back to, to this page in a second. Sometimes you need to complete the square. So what, what they'll do is, where's the page I deleted? <coughs> oh, I think I deleted it after I circled all this stuff. There it is. So what they'll do is they'll take this equation and they'll do it all out. They'll take y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 8x plus 16. And then they'll, they'll do it all out and get everything on one side. And that's not very helpful. Okay? If it's all done out and it's not left factored, you can't really tell anything from it. So if they give you an equation like that, we can't really tell quickly which way it opens and all that stuff. So what we have to do is put it back the way we like it. Complete the square. Now with parabolas, there's only one thing that is squared, so you only need to complete the square once. If the y was squared, like in an ellipse or a hyperbola, then you've got to do it twice. But here we only have to do it once. So just as a reminder to complete the square, we're going to put all the x's on one side, we're going to put the y's on the other. The number that you add to complete the square is half the middle number squared. So half of 4 gives me 2 squared. 4, just a coincidence that it's the same. So plus 4 on the left. Got to make sure you do the plus 4 on the right. So I haven't changed anything. It's still balanced, right? All I did was add 4 to each side. But now the left side should factor very nicely. How does the left side factor? X plus 2 times X plus 2. So X plus 2, X plus 2. We just call that X plus 2 squared. I can also pull out a 4 on the right-hand side. And now I've got an equation exactly like the format. X is squared, the Y isn't, and there's a 4 out in front. So let's check this out. X is squared, positive 4. Let's go back to my chart. x is squared, positive 4, the parabola opens up. Okay, so I can answer that question. H, K, A. So let's go back and look. For this equation, H is the number after the minus sign with x. What's the number after the minus sign? in the x boxes. Yep. Negative 2. K is the number, go back again, K is the number after the minus sign with y. What's the number after the minus sign with y? Yep. Negative 1. And a 
is what you multiply by in front of the vertices. <coughs> so what's A in this case? Yeah. One. one. You could just squeeze in a one if you want. So A is one. Okay. Now I have enough information <coughs> to find whatever I want. Vertex. H comma K. Okay, I'm going to stop bouncing back and forth. I'm just going to look at the packet. So you have that. So vertex. H comma K. Okay, focus. Uh, let's see. The focus is H comma K plus A. I was reading it from the chart. So <coughs> H comma K plus A. What's K plus A here? Zero. Zero. <coughs> Directrix. Um, y equals K minus A. Y equals negative 1 minus 1. What's negative 1 minus 1? Negative 2. Negative two. Okay. And that's, that's everything. So a little bit of extra work because you had to complete the square first. But once you do that, then everything is the same. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, so homework um, tonight is in the packet. Okay, there's a lot of matching. It's not all um, graphing. I think 11 through 18. Um, that is that is all matching, so that should be pretty quick. Um, 19 to 31, that involves finding equations. 37 to 43 is finding equations where it's not at the origin. And so is 47 and 55. All right, so tomorrow uh, we'll have our first test for term four. If you need any extra help, we'll go over this right before the test. Uh,